Well, welcome. Uh, Mr. Pugh, this is a beautiful building. Thank you, Greg. I was here when, this was years ago, was was uh, Bob Byers still here then when this yes. was built? Yes. And this was all donations from That's exactly right. private sources. It'd be, uh, come on, come on a little closer. <clears throat> this, this is, I wish all the buildings looked like this because some of them are, are old. Yes, older. sir. But uh, y'all, thank you for coming out. We've just uh, been on a, a, a tour of the, the facilities here and we have a lot of fine buildings. We have a lot that, uh, that needs some, need some work. But we are, the, the good news is that the, the legislature is responding this year better, better than before, better than ever before. And we are hoping to have about $9.6 million for, for this yes, facility sir. here, this campus, to update these buildings and make them stronger and better. And then about $5 million more million for training and for, for salaries and, and to, to attract the people to work here and also to, to pay them well and to keep them here and yes, for sir. training. We know what to do. But it's always a challenge in the, the prison system and correctional systems, particularly with juveniles. It, it's always a challenge to to maximize those things you have and and to see that we're doing the very best job possible. I want to commend uh, uh, Director Pugh on the fine job that he's done you, since he has been in charge and his deep understanding of exactly what needs to be done and how to do it. We have the will. We just need to, to have the resources. And this year, as you know, we've had a had more money coming in than we thought. Now we want to continue that in future years, but we've had more money coming in than we'd expected, and that's that's one of the reasons that we're able now to to provide some additional funding for this this particular facility. We plan to do more uh, as as our state grows, as our economic strength continues, as we educate the children better as we now we're expanding the 4k system to everyone in the state even if they can't, can't afford it if, if we take care of those things and and have our economic growth and strength and progress and educate the children it, it makes the job that we need to do in facilities like this institutions like this uh, even better yes, sir. and easier to do if you please yes sir well thank you governor uh, we appreciate this opportunity and we appreciate you and your staff coming out this morning. You know, as relates to the report from the Department of Justice, uh, you know, we, we accept this opportunity to do things better uh, here for this population of young people that we're serving. We appreciate the support from you and the General Assembly. Uh, you know, there's a lot of needs, but, you know, as the governor stated, we're willing and, and, and we feel that we're able, you know. Uh, we've done a number of things since the DOJ uh, did their uh, investigation back in 2018. You know, and I told the DOJ in 2018 when I was then the interim director that if I was confirmed as the director and they came back with findings that we need to work on, that we would do those things. And so we're here, we're poised to do whatever it is that we need to do to uh, right the ship. You know, as I've told my staff here at DJJ, it's like a cruise ship and, and I'm the rudder trying to redirect this ship and it takes time. But we're going to do it. We're going to do it. And so we're just very appreciative. Um, you know, there's a number of changes that we've already made. And so we're just looking forward in the, un in the coming weeks to sit down with uh, representatives from the Department of Justice to better learn uh, what exactly it is that they're wanting us to uh, modify, to give them an opportunity to see the things that we've already modified. And again, uh, again, just uh, serve this population in a better way. And so we're just thankful for the opportunity and we're thankful for the support from you, Governor. Well, we, we certainly have <clears throat> have our support in the administration as well as is the the legislature, and, and it is this is a constant process. It's just like new laws, new circumstances. We can always do better. So even if there were not a uh, suggestions and criticisms and uh, statements by the Department of Justice or anyone else, it, it is our uh, our obligation and our determination to see that we make this facility the best that it can possibly be for the people of South Carolina. We don't want to waste any any of our lives. We, want, we want all our people to be strong, healthy, happy, and have great careers. And this institution is a part of that. But again, the stronger we are economically, the stronger we are in our educational system, then the stronger and better we'll be in institutions like this to see that all the all the young people in this case have a have an opportunity to rise to their 
uh, very uh, to the the length, the limits of their talents. Absolutely, absolutely. Any questions by anyone? Director, can you be a little bit more specific about what DJ is doing in response to the DOJ report? Well, we're going to be sitting down with the DOJ in a little over a week to kind of uh, take a deep dive in their concerns. Uh, and so at that point, I'll be better poised to, to really answer that question. But what I'll tell you, as of now, what we're doing is we're looking at better ways to house those young people that are mentally ill. Uh, we've asked the General Assembly for funds, and uh, the governor and the General Assembly approved those funds for us to uh, open up a 12-bed uh, facility for mental, mentally, seriously mentally ill youth here in the state of South Carolina. You know, we're doing that not because we wanted to, but because we needed to. You know, we needed to get those young people that are seriously mentally ill in an uh, environment that's more conducive to their needs. And so uh, that's one big change that we're doing. Uh, the governor has endorsed uh, regionalization. Uh, what, well, it's an idea that we came up here at the agency about getting young people closer to home, shrinking the population here in secure confinement. So with regionalization, we'll have fewer people here. You know, that's going to have a two-prong effect because our staffing ratios are low. You know, we're, we're struggling to uh, recruit and retain, and so, again, we're very appreciative of the funds that uh, the General Assembly and the Governor have given us this year for recruitment and retention. But with that being said, if we can reduce the number of young people or at individual locations, then our staffing ratios can adjust themselves. And so those are some of the things that we're doing. Um, we're, we're looking at better ways to serve or to house those individuals who go under protective custody, who say they, uh, they don't feel safe. And so we're just trying to holistically look at the, the, the letter that the Department of Justice has sent us, and then when they arrive here on campus in a week or so, we'll take a deeper dive. But those are just a few things that we've done uh, since being here in 2018. Can you speak to the current policy of how long juveniles are kept in isolation for and what reforms might need to be made on that front and then also um, the other front of breaking up fights and how quickly those fights are broken up? Which sure, again, some sense. of that's predicated again on staffing, right? You know, and, and so if, if our staffing ratios are 1 to 10 or 1 to 15 or 1 to 20 and a fight breaks out, is, the example I like to use is in the local school. You know, if a fight breaks out in the cafeteria, you got to wait on a number of faculty to get there to, you know, break up that fight. It's no different here at the Department of Juvenile Justice. We need bodies. You know, we need people to help break up those fights. But I, as relates to isolation, our policy is once a youth is calm, once a youth is collected, you know, once that youth can be returned to general population and he's no longer a threat to him or herself, or he is no longer a threat to staff, then they can be returned to general population. If they continue to, be, uh, to behave in a way that's disruptive, then they remain. But we're going to look at better ways to, to uh, an intermediate intermediate way. You know, we're putting timeout rooms in the dorms so that a young person can say, hey, I'm, I'm feeling a little volatile at this time. I need some time. And so they can go in this room and take a timeout, you know, de-escalate themselves. We're trying to better train our staff in de-escalation tactics, you know, to try to talk the young people <clears throat> down. So there's a number of things we're doing to aid that policy because the policy is, is good. But the policy is only as good as the ability to put it into practice. And so we need more people, we need more training, and as the governor stated, we're going to do those things. And is there a maximum amount of time that a juvenile can be kept in isolation right now? It again, it, it's, it depends on their, oh, okay, sorry. it's based on their behavior. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Okay. And as far as timelines with the lawsuit, at what point, lawsuit? I mean, or as far as um, the allegations or what you guys are looking at, I the concerns. Concerns that it was a two-month window. How much longer do you have to make those reforms? Accor according to the letter, it says the Department of Justice uh, is interested in seeing progress, and we're making progress. So there is no deadline, but we, we're making we're making major <clears throat> progress. So we we think we'll be able to comply with with those concerns uh, soon. But again, there are always concerns in in this type of work and we're always trying to be better and there have been a lot of improvements here over the last uh, few years yes, and, and just recently under Director Pew. But we, we got a lot of work to do. We, we look forward to the day that we don't have youth that need to come to a place like this. But, um, and we're working towards that, but that's a, that's a goal. It's uh, yeah, That'd be very difficult to reach that. So we need places like this where we can take those young people and. And, and turn them around, turn their lives around. So with the list that you have of things you want to change, how would you start and where would you start first? Like, okay, the funding comes in, 
What's first? I'll, I'll, as a preface to that, the ideas, the understandings, the, the vision, the policies are terrific. It's primarily just a question of, of money because everything, the training, the, the salaries for the employees, uh, the, the money to build places like this, it's, it, it's a lot, it takes a lot of money. And we, uh, historically in a lot of states, uh, there never is enough money. I, I don't know what the, we could probably spend every dime that we could, could, could be allocated to this, but there are limits because there are other needs. We have roads, we have schools, we have a thousand and one other things, but uh, this is something that requires attention. And uh, Director Pugh is, is putting a lot of attention, very persuasive, and informative with uh, those of us in other positions that, that are know better what to do because of his leadership. I, I would echo those sentiments. And so, but from a strategic standpoint, we'll look at the low-hanging fruit. We'll look at those wins that we can get quickly. And, and we've already taken advantage of some of those wins. You know, the timeout rooms. You know, not using rooms that the Department of Justice said don't have a line of sight. You know, those are low-hanging fruit. You know, we, we wanted to be proactive. We didn't want to wait until they got here in, in a couple of weeks and start moving. You know, and we know that there's going to be some uh, bigger needs that are going to be monetary needs as the governor has identified. But as the director of this agency, my job was to find the low-hanging fruit. Let's attack it head on and let's see what we can change today. And so there were a number of things that we could change. You know, putting those young people in a better environment that are under mental health observation. You know, getting a calming room that those young people, when they feel that they need a space to go and uh, de-escalate, will provide them that space. Those are things that we could do right away. And so, um, uh, from a strategic standpoint, low-hanging fruit. I ought to mention this podium is going to come up to the state house. This yes, was sir. built by some of the young people here, and as you see, it's uh, it is well built. It shows a lot of a lot of skill and. Uh, a lot of ability, a lot of talent. So this is this is just a, a tangible thing to look at of, of what's happening here. This is terrific. Thank you, Governor. In fact, I like this one better than the one that we have up there now. Well, I have to let the young people know. They took a lot of pride in it. <laughs> Any more questions? All right, y'all, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank sir. you, Governor. Let me out, grab that out your way.